Hello everyone and welcome back to the video. Now we all know that unique technologies come in all shapes and sizes. Some of them are very strong and others feel quite useless at times. And they also vary in prices. So it's tough to know if you're actually getting a good deal and if you should bother picking up these technologies or it's simply not worth it. In this video, I'm gonna go ahead and give you guys my top five best unique technologies in the castle age for Age of Empires 2. If you're not sure what a unique tech is, basically they are the technologies that are available only for that specific sieve. Every sieve has two that are completely unique to itself, available at the castle, one of them in castle age and the other in imperial age the benefit of having a strong unique tech is that it gives you an edge over the other civilizations that might not benefit from something as similar in strength anyways let's go ahead and take a look at the top five list Starting off at number five, we've got the Aztecs. Aztecs are a very strong civilization in general, but the unique tech in Castleage really pushes them over the edge for late game. It's called a Tlatl, and it gives the skirmishers plus one attack and plus one range. Now on the surface, this doesn't seem like that much of a boost because skirmishers are not the most damage dealing unit in general. However, the plus one range really helps versus other range units, namely against Arbalest or Heavy Cav Archers. It lets you outrange Arbalest by one and Heavy Cav Archers by two, assuming it's a generic civilization. This lets you hit first and Fights and also be able to allow you to trade without having any damage come back your way. And the extra one attack, although it helps against other range units, it has a better use for the skirmisher. Normally, the skirmisher does very low damage against something like a champion or a hussar, but if you give it the plus one attack, it actually does significantly more damage in mass to these units that are usually quite immune to skirmishers. Having a trash unit with a good amount of attack in the back of your army is a really good way to trade with your opponent in late game when gold becomes tight. So, Aztec skirmishers come late game are actually amazing, not only against other range units but also against some melee units in most cases be sure to pick up this tech and make use of them in late game when you can Moving on to number four now, we've got the Poles. The unique tech is called Salatra Privileges and it gives their knights costing minus 60% gold. Now on the surface, this seems really overpowered and I'm sure a lot of you guys might've had this higher up on your list. However, there's a couple of drawbacks for Poles that make this technology not as strong as it seems. But the first thing is simply the price of the tech. It's very expensive, so it's hard to pick it up and so the payback is quite slow on the gold cost. The other big thing, and I think this is like the main reason why I'm not a huge fan of this, is that they missed the last armor upgrade for their cavalry in Imperial Age. So the knights that you're investing into in Castle Age, they might not have the best future in that current game because cavalier without the last armor are very susceptible to mass range units and even castles well placed at home can easily deal with cavalier or in this case even knight raids. Even still considering these two massive drawbacks, I still feel like this technology is super strong because having knights at a big discount and not only a discount, discounted with the most important resource going into mid late game is still a huge bonus. So I highly recommend you guys can pick this up in Castle Age but if you do, make sure to go for the kill because your units don't scale as well. Spam up those knights and look to close out the game when you pick up this technology in Castle Age. Moving on now to number three, we've got the Tatars. The unique tech is called Silk Armor and it gives Light Cavalry, Step Lancer, and Cav Archers plus one, plus one armor. This means plus one melee armor and plus one Pierce armor. This is a massive bonus and I honestly compared it to stuff like the Turk bonus and the Saracen bonus, which gives extra 20 HP to for Turks heavy Cav Archers and for uh, Saracens, it gives it to Camel units. Now those bonuses are really good because HP is solid. However, having extra Pierce armor on raiding units is absolutely massive. And so for Cav Archers and Light Cav to benefit from the plus one pierce armor and even melee armor is just such a strong boost to your army composition as the Tatars that I really value this technology for the Civ. It also gives it the Step Lancers if that ever comes up. They're not the strongest unit in general, but they definitely have their place in the game. So make sure you remember that when picking up Silk Armor. It's pretty much a must for every Tatar late game composition that revolves around Cav Archers or Hussars. Pick this up nice and early and you're gonna have a much stronger comp. All right, moving on to number two. And honestly, I would have had this at number one, but I wanted to avoid that Hera always favors Hussars controversy. So I tried to be as objective as possible and stuck Bulgarians at number two. Their unique tech is called Stirrups and it makes their cavalry attack 33% faster. Now this seems like a weird bonus and might not seem that strong when you first see it, but it's actually insane because cavalry applies to the Conic, which is the unique unit. It applies to their cavalier and it also applies to their Hussar. And that's the really big one. Having Hussar that are that much stronger than enemy Hussar just allows you to 
carry fights completely. You can send in waves and waves of Hussar that trade really well against pretty much every single unit your opponent can make. This bonus also helps your Hussar trade against Halberdier, as crazy as that might sound, because having a unit that attacks faster increases your DPS and allows you to take better fights exponentially the more you have. So if you have like 50 of them, they all attack 33% faster and you can start to really thin down your opponent's army, giving you massive advantage with a unit that only costs food. It's such an overpowered bonus in late game when gold is running low and if you just support it with something like a skirmisher or you know maybe another gold unit maybe heavy cow archer or something like that that can help deal with halberdier a little bit the stirrup hussar will just completely dominate everything else so it's really a bonus that you have to try to really understand how strong it is but like i said just the fact that it applies to conics and both stable units is a massive plus and yeah, you know, the cherry on top is just how spammable hussar has become in late game with this technology if you're playing bulgarians this is an absolute must pick it up when you can all right, before I show you guys number one, I've got some honorable mention. The first one is going to be Goths, and their unique tech is called Anarchy, allowing them to make Huskrolls from the barracks. It was hard for me to, to judge how strong this is, because for the Goths, this is such a massive bonus, and the Goths basically don't work without this. Goths can easily be at number one on my list with Anarchy. You know, allowing them to make Huskrolls from the barracks is super important, but I just didn't know how to judge it because it's so unique to the Goths. And although you might argue, okay, Huns get a similar bonus, but for Huns, it doesn't really matter that much because the Tarkins aren't that spammable. So just with three, four, castles Tarkins are fine being made from them but for goth you don't really want to be making you know huskos from a castle it's not that strong you want to make use of the faster producing barracks and for that reason anarchy is an insane technology it's pretty much a must pick up every time you play goths so very strong technology didn't know where to place it so stuck it in the honorable mention Next up, and for similar reasons, we've got the Sicilians. The unique tech is called First Crusade, and it gives seven sergeants from each town center up to five as soon as you research it. Again, it's another one that's very hard to judge because it's very unique to Sicilians. It's extremely strong when it's needed and when this tech does come in, but it's just simply hard to rank up against others because there are some games with Sicilians that you just don't want this technology and it doesn't come up. So when it comes up, it's amazing. And when it doesn't come up, then, you know, it's pretty useless. So I put it in the honorable mention just because it is really Really powerful when it does come up and it's a big part of the Sicilian's strength. And lastly, on my honorable mentions list, we've got Yeoman for the Britons. Yeoman gives their foot archers plus one range and their towers plus two attack. Now, initially, I wanted to include this in my top five list, but it just simply didn't make the cut because I really don't feel like this is a much needed upgrade in a lot of cases. Like, yeah, it's really strong, but its price is very high. So it's really hard to pick this up in the early game and it really feels like a late game technology. However, with the Britons, you're already getting a lot of range just by default from your civilization bonus. And so sometimes I don't have Yeoman and I'm not prioritizing it because it simply just doesn't matter. My units already have a ton of range. I don't need to add one more on top of it. That being said, it's still extremely nice because it does apply to your skirmishers, giving your skirms plus one range. And we've already talked about how strong that could be for the Aztecs as well. However, I just don't see it being that strong for the Britons. I don't think they relied that much on their skirmishers. And so if I had an extra spot, if it was a top six list, it would be the Britons. But I just didn't feel it being that important. The plus two attack on the tower doesn't really matter that much as well. All right, now the moment we've all been waiting for. Number one on the list, we've got a new civilization. One that's kind of terrorizing the ladder and probably needs a couple more nerfs. It's the Gerjaras. The unique tech is quite crazy. I don't know how it's pronounced. Kshatriyas, definitely said that wrong. Anyways, it gives their military units minus 25% food cost, which is absolutely insane. And you heard that right, military units. That's so many units. That's so vague. Let's go through the list and see what that affects. It affects the elite skirmisher, the hand cannoneer, the elephant archer in a big way because it's so expensive, the two-handed swordsman. It also affects, well, spearmen, but you're not making those much. Uh, Hassar, the shawarma rider, heavy camels, and even in the siege workshop, the armored elephant, not to mention the unique unit. It's really insane, and it just feels like completely unfair to play against this in late game just because their stars are costing less and everything else to support them is also costing less now don't get me wrong food is not the most important resource in late game but the fact that this is so flexible just means it's a must pick up every time you play gorgaras going into late game that's gonna do it guys for my top five list of best cast laid unique texts. Do let me know if I didn't include one that you'd expect to see. And if you have any disagreements, also please mention them in the comments below. I'd love to see you guys' opinion. I really enjoy a lot of the unique texts in this game and there are a lot of good ones. So this was a hard list to make. If this video does well, I'll make another one talking about the top five best unique texts in Imperial Age. Till next time guys, stay safe, peace.